Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel, Dreams and Happiness. And if you're new here, welcome to my channel. I would love for you to like, comment, subscribe. I think I'm on part five now. This is going to be the part five, I think. Um, But this is going to be the last video I really go in talking about this job that I had. The most toxic job that I have ever had. So, I'm um, sorry about the lighting. Uh, it is like 7.30. So, starting to slowly get, you know, night slowly so yeah sun's starting to come down or whatever and it's been a long day i have had my um fumbolomy orientation for my fumbolomy class today and yeah i'm excited about that but anyway about this job so i remember i think this was year three of me working there well this there was a situation that happened where um if y'all can remember you know the second time former uh president Barack Obama, Barack Obama elected, got re-elected to be president for another four years, right? Um, so the night that that happened, I had a, I worked that night third shift. It was me, I think Amanda, she was a med tech. Um, another girl named Ashley, she was a med tech, and some other CNAs or whatever. And basically, coming into work, and when we found out, or Amanda got pissed off like she was mad you would have think somebody had tried to fight her or something she was just pissed off when she found out that um former president Barack Obama got reelected and you know I understand everybody is has a is obligated to their own opinion about politics what you believe in you know who you vote for you have a right to that but the way she was so angry it was like it didn't make sense how mad she was. You know what I'm saying? And she was saying stuff. I was sitting in like the activity room. Um, and she was at the nurse station. That's like maybe, I want to say 10, 15 feet apart. That's where she was sitting at night. And I would just hear she was talking to um Ashley, right? And I think there, there was another girl. Her name, I forgot her name. I think it was, I want to say Angela. And they was just talking shit about Obama, honey. And we got to the point where Amanda even says something of the lines of... Now, of course, they're not talking to me, but I can obviously hear them, you know. She says something of the lines of... Um, my husband just told me if it was up to him, he would set Obama on, on fire and bomb the White House. And I'm just thinking to myself, okay, like I said, that's five. You don't have to like Obama. Everybody has the right to their own opinion. But, like, why are you so mad to the point? Your, why is your husband so mad talking about um, he want to set Obama on fire? What did he do so bad to be set on fire? Like, what the hell? I don't think anybody deserves to be set on fire. Like, unless you, like, killed somebody or something like that, you know... What did he do to deserve to be set on fire and have his house bombed? Like, to me, I'm thinking, like, why do you hate this man that much? You know what I'm saying? It's a, one thing to say, you know, I just don't like the way Obama's running the country. He's a horrible president. He does a horrible job. He doesn't know what he's doing. Okay, that's your opinion. But for you to say, or for your husband to say, and, and the way she was talking, she pretty much agrees with her husband. So, so what, for you to say, you know, if it was up to me, I would bomb the White House and Obama deserves to be, I would set Obama on fire. Like, there's it's something else behind that. For for you to hate this man so much, you know what I'm saying? It's something more behind that. You know what I mean? So, um, another CNA that is, she comes and asks Amanda, because she had to come on the other side to get something, and she was asking her, like, you know, well, oh, okay, you don't like Obama. She, man's like no i hate him and i think her name was tracy tracy was like why don't you like him just out of curiosity like what's the why don't you like him why do you hate him i just don't like him i don't know i just don't like him i hate him normally if you're if you hate somebody it has a meaning reason a meaningful reason behind it like hate is a very strong word if you hate somebody there's a reason why you hate them like let's say if somebody 
did something really horrible to you like they tried to kill you or they tried to rob you or something like that i could see okay i see why you hate them but like what what did he do for to you for you to hate him so hmm so later on that night um and i know you know working in the health field i'm gonna come across racism especially working with the elderly population they grew up you know in a time where it was normal for black and white people to be separated and things like that so i'm always professional you know what i'm saying even though i shouldn't have to deal with that i understand like i'm professional and i don't really let it get to me if i no, I'm, I've had it happen to me maybe just a few times out of working in the health field where I've had to deal with, you know, racist remarks by patients or family members and stuff like that. But, you know, whatever. But, um, so one of the, I forgot her name, but one of the CNAs that came up was after we doing our rounds, right? And I, there was a resident, we're going to call her Betty. She, Betty, she's in her pretty much in her right mind she can talk and walk and stuff and the cna was t talking to amanda she was telling amanda did you know miss betty uh told me that she's mad because her granddaughter is getting married to a n boy and y'all know what i'm saying like, i'm not gonna say it here but with the e like with the hard er so of course none of them are talking to me but you know it's third shift it's quiet so i'm able to, if unless you're like whispering or talking really soft they know i can hear what they're saying and amanda was instead of saying like oh well, i hate that she said that or that's awful that she would say something like that oh dang i'm all the only thing amanda said was well well is she so yeah i had to deal with stuff like that and it was just it was just crazy so what really um pushed me to I should have been quit this job like after the first month i don't know why i'm never gonna allow myself to go through some bullshit like that again but like i think back then i really like i said i didn't have the mindset like girl it, you can find a CNA job like that. You do not have to work here. That's, I don't know. I guess, I don't know what I was thinking, y'all. I don't know. I was 18 years old, though, so. But anyway, um, what was I about to say? Oh, so what really started pushing me to the edge to really, like, look for a different job was when they changed my schedule without telling, asking me or telling me. Actually, they changed everybody's schedule. So when I first got hired, and for the past three years, right, um, you know, they do eight hour shifts. My schedule has always been 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. I, I worked second, like maybe three times after three years. I worked there when like a reader asked me, could I come in? And after the third time I did that, I I would never work second shift again. How I was treated. I told y'all with Tamika and some other things that happened. I was like, oh, I'm only doing what I got hired for. After they, how they treated me, 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. AM is all I'm doing. Oh, by the way, it's, uh, from what I was told, Tamika ended up getting fired. Um, I wasn't there when it happened, but I was, somebody told me that um, they changed the assignments, and I guess Tamika didn't like that. So apparently, she threw the something, some keys at the medtech. When the medtech told her she had to go on the other side, she threw some keys at the medtech. I don't know how true that is. I wasn't there, but I I believe it because knowing how she Tamika is. I believe she did throw some keys at that med tip. So, yeah, she actually got fired. And that's when she had to go back to the pizza place. Um, like, to work there, like, full-time. Because she was working at the pizza place part-time. And then working at the assistant living place, like, full-time. But anyway, what was I saying? I'm sorry if I'm talking all over the place. Um, What was I saying? Oh, so, a lot of people started quitting. This was, like, my last year of working there. A lot of people, med techs and CNAs, um, the place was getting very, very bad. So I guess they didn't have enough staff. So they didn't, without any kind of warning, any kind of staff meeting or anything, we came into work one night and everybody was on 12-hour shifts. Everybody. And they didn't even call us. 
So now they, they print out the schedule every month. They, I think they print it out like two, at least three weeks to four weeks ahead of time. So we came in, look at our schedule, everybody on 12 hour shifts. So I went from working 11 p.m. Uh, to 7 a.m. to um, 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. And I didn't agree to that. I didn't. I feel like the, she, they could have at least called me and asked me or or something. It was just, no, your schedule's changing. Your schedule's changing. And that was like the final straw. The final straw should have been way before then. But for me, that was like, oh, hell no. This is not right. So that's when I started looking for other jobs. And yeah, it, that place just got horrible. So I think like the next week, like I said, they didn't let nobody know nothing. I had to work from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. I I didn't want to do that at that place. And another thing, I don't know, for whatever reason, they said that we're going to have to start wearing certain colors. I think it was like, na it was navy blue for whatever reason. Like, oh, y'all have to wear certain colors now. And they just started coming up with all, all these kind of rules. I'm like, this is why people quitting. Because y'all y'all on some bullshit. Like, this is a sister living place. Why we got to wear certain colors and and they changed the colors like two times so y'all i did not know this job was stealing from me so um i told y'all we have mandatory mandatory meetings right and uh we're supposed to you know get paid for those meetings and they would be like 45 minutes to an hour long and you know whenever a job tells you we have we're going to have a mandatory staff meeting that means you clock in now i definitely do that now and i we was i was clocking in too so one day this is um after i don't quit the job i think a year later after i don't quit this job moved on i got a check in the mail um it was like over 300 dollars. it turns out they the place that i was at they um were in a lawsuit they were being sued for former employees i didn't even know about that so they never i did i y'all gonna think i'm stupid I, like i said young and dumb but i didn't know about like they were they didn't pay me like they were supposed to for these meetings and stuff and i guess over over the years it added up and it turns out they did they owed me over 300 dollars. so i got the check in the mail i guess they did that to try to i guess well they didn't have a choice you know that's the money that they owed me and I was so happy. I was not expecting that. So I just checked my mail one day and I had a check for over $300. This was totally unexpected. And I found out through Facebook and stuff that a lot of people that used to work there got checks too. Some people got $500. Um, I guess it depends on, you know, how many how much money they owed you for the meetings that they didn't pay people for. And um, that was just was so crazy to me. Like they was so, so they were stealing from me. Like this job treated me like shit. And it was stealing from me. I didn't buy. I didn't realize it. But the three hundred dollars, like I said, is stuff that added up over the time. Over the time. And at this job, another thing is you can't just quit without a notice because when you get hired, they have you sign a paper saying if you quit without a two week notice, um, your final check will be down to minimum wage. So the job barely paid over minimum wage back then, anyway. But let's say you got hired to make eight fifty an hour, but if you quit without a notice, your final check, um, you're gonna cut your pay down to uh the minimum wage in North Carolina is uh well, I don't know about now, but it was seven twenty five an hour. So they did that to try to make sure you gave your two week notice. But yeah, I remember when I finally quit. Um, by the end of Rita had quit. We had uh, Mandy. She was a former med tech there. She took Rita's place. It was a lot of new um, employees there when I finally just quit. And I got hired on at another nursing home. Um, but yeah, it was just, it was really an awful place. It would, I don't, I will never put up with that bullshit again from my job. I just, honestly, I, I didn't know no better. And you live and learn so yeah um i think that's all i want to say i want to make this video too long um i'm gonna do another story time about when um i'll i'll let you, i'll i'll say that for later but i'll have i got another story time i'll go ahead and tell y'all a patient son cooked for me and that's all i'm gonna say i'm gonna save the rest 
the rest of the information for the story time so yeah that's gonna be the end of this little series about the most toxic job um i ever have like honestly the bullshit that this place put me through i could go on and on and on like the stuff that i told the situations that i've told y'all about told y'all about is only like not even half of it it's just like it didn't even barely scratch the surface but i would literally have to make probably 30 damn videos if i was gonna keep on talking about every situation that <laughs> that i went through at this job but i just wanted to tell y'all different situations so y'all have an overall idea of how toxic this job was um so y'all have so so y'all can get the picture of why this job was so toxic toxic and horrible so if y'all have any questions down below um comment and don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i'll see y'all the next time bye